Isaiah chapter 10, verse 24 to 27. O my people that dwell in Zion, be not afraid of the Italian. No. Don't be afraid of the Belgian. Don't be afraid of the French. Now, what other countries have we been picking on for end time? For end time. Isaiah 10 is not an end time prophecy. Isaiah 10 was talking about the Assyrian invasion in 715 BC. The invasion was recorded in 2 Kings chapter 18 and 19. Isaiah 10 is a fulfilled prophecy, not an end time prophecy. The great and powerful Assyrian Empire was soon destroyed by Babylonians. It was never able to conquer the tiny Judah. And that night the angel of the Lord went out and struck down 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. And when people arose early in the morning, behold, these were all dead bodies. In 612 BC, 103 years after Isaiah 10 was fulfilled, the powerful Assyrian Empire was destroyed by the rebelling Babylonians, who allied with the Medes, Scythians, and Cimmerians, just as Nahum prophesied in Nahum 3 5 7. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib king of Assyria came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah king of Judah sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong, withdraw from me, whatever you impose on me I will bear. And the king of Assyria required of Hezekiah king of Judah three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. At that time Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the doorposts that Hezekiah king of Judah had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. The anointing of course is Jesus Christ. The anointing is the English word for the Greek word Christ. Christ is the Greek word for the Hebrew word Messiah. It's exactly the same. Jesus Christ is the anointed, not the anointing. The Holy Spirit is the anointing. You shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. The future enemy that will require the anointing to destroy. Steve Shiakalandi confuses the past with the future. Assyria is a past enemy, destroyed by the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. The angel of Yahweh, Gog and Magog, are the future enemies, to be destroyed, by the returning Jesus Christ. Even the geographical uh, definition of Babylon really should not be Iraq, but should be Saudi Arabia. The center of Islam is not in Iraq, it's in Saudi Arabia. Both Medina and Mecca are the epicenter of the system that is anti-Semite, anti-Messiah. Mystery Babylon is a city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. Mystery Babylon is a city, built on seven physical hills, and seven spiritual kingdoms. Its identity is a mystery, which means, it is disguised. Mystery Babylon is called, Babylon the Great, because it resembles the city of Babylon, in today's Iraq, but her crimes surpass, the Babylon in Iraq. Mystery Babylon, is the mother of prostitutes, the origin of all heresies, the teachings of demons. Mystery Babylon, is the mother of abominations, the origin of all anti-god philosophies, and practices. Mystery Babylon sits on many waters, honored by peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and languages. Mystery Babylon sits on the Eighth Kingdom, Gog's one world government, with its one world religion. 
Mystery Babylon dresses herself, in purple, scarlet, and glittering gold. Mystery Babylon holds a golden cup, that intoxicates the whole world. Mystery Babylon is a murderer, drunk with the blood of the saints. Mystery Babylon is hated, by the ten Islamic kings of the Antichrist. The Lord has stirred up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, because his purpose concerning Babylon is to destroy it, for that is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance for his temple. Rome's crime surpasses Babylon. Rome renamed Jerusalem, Alia Capitolina, in 135 AD. Rome renamed the land of Israel, Palestine, in 135 AD. Rome sold Jews into slavery, throughout the Roman Empire. Rome alienated, and marginalized Jews, by harsh Roman imperial law, and Roman Catholic canon law. Babylon oppressed the Jews for 70 years. Rome oppressed the Jews for 700 years. And as the toes of the feet were partly iron and partly clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle. As you saw the iron mixed with soft clay, so they will mix with one another in marriage, but they will not hold together just as iron does not mix with clay. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all who have been slain on earth. According to Roman eyewitness historian Tacitus, in his book Annals, and John Dowling's, History of Romanism, Rome has murdered 120 million people, of which, 50 million were Christians. If Rome be not, the mystery Babylon, there is nothing in the world that can be called by that name. Because all of their, you know, their idols that are in Mecca and Medina. Fallen, fallen is Babylon, and all the carved images of her gods he has shattered to the ground. Fallen! Fallen is Babylon the Great! She who made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality! Fallen! Fallen is Babylon the Great! She has become a dwelling place for demons! 
a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Obama apparently is the Gog. Obama cannot be Gog. According to Daniel 9.26, Ezekiel 38.15, and 39.2. Gog, the Antichrist, is a Roman descendant, residing in the uttermost parts of the North. The Septuagint used Gog to render names, such as Agag, and Og. Gog appears to be used, as a general title, for an enemy of Yahweh, and Yahweh's people. He's Gog. Does that mean he's the Antichrist? Maybe, maybe not. Gog and the Antichrist is the same person. Gog's army is eaten up by beasts and birds, in Ezekiel chapter 39, verses 4, 17 to 20. The army of the Antichrist is fed to wild birds, in Revelation chapter 19, verses 17 to 18, and 21. After the downfall of Gog, the Messiah Jesus Christ, sets up his kingdom, with the fourth temple, the Ezekiel temple. After the Antichrist's downfall, Jesus' thousand-year kingdom begins. A loaf of wheat bread and three loaves of barley will cost a day's pay and don't waste the oil and the wine. The black horse is simply hyperinflation. The black horse is famine, caused by the red horse, World War III, not hyperinflation. Proof of this timing, is that, the 24 elders, the raptured 12 Jewish apostles, of the New Testament, and 12 tribes of Israel, of the Old Testament, are already in heaven, with the Lamb, before the first seal is opened. It looks like there is a global financial crisis due, probably towards the uh, last quarter of 2015. Could happen before, but uh, due in 2015. Let's make it a little bit more leeway, 2015. And then that will lead to the green horse, which is more deaths, more beheadings, and then we're waiting for World War III. On the 14th of Nisan, when they kill the Passover lamb, the Passover lamb is killed, on the 15th of Nisan. The twilight of 14th, is the beginning of 15th. A Hebrew day begins at sunset. On the 14th of Nisan, when they kill the Passover lamb, that's the day that Jesus Christ was crucified. Jesus Christ was crucified on 15 Nisarn, the Passover day, not 14 Nisarn, the Passover Eve. Jesus ate the Passover at the night of Nisarn 14, which was the beginning of Nisarn 15, according Moses' law, Exodus 12 6. It was predicted on the Hebrew calendar he would be crucified for the sins of the world on the 14th of Nisan, 
And he was. Their day starts in the evening, so Jesus was buried in the evening, that's the 15th. Jesus was buried on Nisan 15, the day of preparation, just before sunset, so that the Sabbath would not be broken. Rapture brings excitement in heaven until we have to have that holy hush and realize the tribulation has started. Those killer hailstones in Guangdong, China. Is it Guangdong again, huh? Something bad is going on in Guangdong, I'm telling you. You better stay away from that place. There were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those eighteen on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Jesus told us, calamities were not God's way, to single out, an especially evil group, for death, but as a means of warning, to all sinners. Calamitous judgment, was eventually coming to all, if they did not repent. Killer hailstone. Well, thank God we don't see this kind of stuff in Australia. But we see it in places where there are fewer Christians. Killer hailstones. It looks like that type of wood which has been eaten by worms. And doesn't the Bible say that worm wood will fall? Worm wood. Wood eaten by worms. What looks like wood eaten by worms? How about a 15-ton meteorite? Wormwood is known for its bitterness and belongs to the genus Artemisia. The bitter bush has a connection with the Greek Roman goddess Artemis, also known as Diana for the Roman. Mexicans dance with garlands of wormwood on their heads to celebrate their great festival of the goddess of salt. Wormwood is used in an old Roman Catholic love charm to blaspheme the author of the Gospel of Luke. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Say a tenth of everything. Good. Giving a tithe to God, giving a tenth of everything, is an eternal principle. Tithes predated Moses. Abraham's tithe to Melchizedek was purely voluntary. Only 10% of the spoils was tithed, not the 10% of the total. Abraham's tithe was for the Levites who were tithe receivers. Abraham's tithe is not the same as the required tithes given to Israel in the Mosaic Law, which originated from Jacob's vow in Genesis 28-22. The tithing system in Israel was to provide for the Levites, who were not given land but were separated to serve God in the Tent of Meeting and the Temple. According to 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 and 9, all Christians are spiritual Levites. That is, tithes receivers, 